Welcome to the Christian Atheist, where faith and reason fuse in the Incarnation. Episode number 74, Interview on the Dobbs Decision with Matt Matias of Meme Lord Monday. We begin discussing the impact of Roe vs. Wade on our country. No, that was that was great because I think you hit it on the nail where it it did like pivot our our stances on so sure. many issues on on the sanctity of life, on the sanctity of sex and marriage, yep. um, which are fundamental, I think, to societies. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not irrespective. Uh, and this is good psychology. If you if you mm. if you read the psychological literature, irrespective of whether you believe in Christ or not, yeah. irrespective of re whether you're religious or not, the best thing for society are stable marital relationships, not yeah. hookups. And our hookup culture has gotten way out of hand. Yeah, that's another meme we made. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> so we had there. There's some headline about some girl on TikTok that said. If Roe versus Wade gets overturned, it it will absolutely decimate hookup culture. And I put an image of of uh, Darth Sidious underneath, going good, <laughs> good. So yeah, that's. I mean, it, the yeah, I think these these things have impeded our our ability to flourish as a society in ways that, like you said, like there's blinders been put on us that that even like you said remove religion we're not even talking about christian stuff yet we haven't even talked about jesus yet <laughs> we haven't talked about anything we're talking about societal uh pillars that have been removed i think um th that are that have affected us in a really deep way now and, and so let's do the christian atheist thing sorry what do you want to say i know you got I, something i was i was just going to say um and, and look how the the left has become a part of this because the left, I mean, hasn't become a part of it. They're the ones that drove it. But they started very low. It's like um, abortions should be rare and safe. That was where they started. And then not too long ago, they started talking about shouting your abortion. Right? More abortions are wonderful. Um, and these are the people who supposedly, you know, don't want us killing puppies. Um, and yet they're, they're shouting their abortion. Um, can you see the hardness of heart that is coming about in the people who are supposed to be being the compassionate and watching out for the for those who are the downtrodden and the those who are defenseless? Right, that is their mm. natural role, and they are they are they are hardening their own hearts. They are becoming callous, and their um, their conscience consciences are becoming seared, deeply seared. Yeah. Um, if you can write an article like that, and, and boy, Jenny and I saw something on Facebook the other day um, where someone was ranting about how evil adoption is and that it would be better if those children were, were killed or, or aborted. So oh this is where we're going. This is where we're going. And it, it was predictable, right? It's the slippery slope argument. But the slippery slope argument, <laughs> and I teach logic, it, it's sometimes a fallacy. But it's sometimes the truth too. Yeah. When you start down a, a logical road, you're going to end up following the logic to its end. And we're doing that as a society. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen tweets where people have said things like an abortion would be an act of love. Yeah. I've seen tweets of people saying, like I've seen videos. So that company I talked about live action, they do on the street interviews, asking people about their views on abortion. And one lady was like, she, she was asked by the reporter, she's like, do you feel like a mother has the right to kill her child? And the lady just kept saying, that's her choice. She's like, even if your child is, is born two years old, yeah, and she's right. like, that's her, that's her choice. Yeah. And she just kept repeating. That's her choice. That's her choice. I mean, how like this is, I don't like to throw this term around, but uh, how utterly satanic yeah. is that? Yeah. It's evil that darkness for light, evil for good. It, it's, mm. it, is that Ezekiel? <laughs> Sorry, <It's>, yeah. <laughs> I should know that reference, and I don't. <laughs> so, hey, you've only been talking a Christian for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been. A, I'm, you're right. I've been away from from the, the Christian world for a long time, and coming back, it's like 
I'm on a whole new crash course to, to refamiliarize <laughs> myself with things I knew well years and years ago. I'll tell you what, brother, I, I only know like a handful of, uh, verses that I've memorized and th at the top of that list is Jesus wept. So yeah. trust me, <laughs> you're in good company. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It's, it is, it's atrocious, honestly, what, what we're seeing in society, as far as like the, the comfortability of, uh, of, of eliminating human life. I mean, and like I said, we haven't even got to the, um, to the whole Christian perspective of it. And I wanted to do this. Uh, one of the reasons I enjoy your perspective is because, you know, you having the Christian and atheist mind that you can view it from both perspectives. So, um, what would you say as far as like, we'll go back to the, the, um, ramifications of the overturning of this, what are some of the negative ramifications of, of this, uh, policy being overturned, um, that, that the left does have, right? I, I think anytime people create laws there are intended and unintended consequences. And we have had 50 years in which state legislatures have not had the chance to deal with this at all. Right? It's been out of their hands. Mm. Um, and so there could very well be a group of Christians who influence a legislature to institute some sort of law that says, look, they're Abortions are forbidden in this state under all circumstances. Um, mm. And if that's the case, you don't get to choose whether uh, uh, the mother who has a child who is, is you know, malformed and is threatening her life um, to, to abort the baby. Well, that's the type of thing that I don't think any reasonable Christian would say. And in fact... Mm. As I understand it, there are no laws that have been written like that. I have pretty good confidence that that's not going to happen. Um, however, I mean, is it possible that there are some bad things that will come of this? I think it's almost guaranteed that there are some bad mm. things that will come of this. And what I mean are in individual lives, I think the overall structure um, will improve. I think it will go in the right direction. But will there be women who actually do say live in a country or in a state that they're not allowed to, and then they try to do some home remedy or some home fix because they're desperate and end up damaging themselves and hurting themselves? Yeah, that's possible. And it probably mm -hmm. will happen. In fact, anytime you put boundaries on things, there will be people trying to find ways to skirt them. And uh, we know that um, our actions always have consequences. Some of them will be good. Some of them will be bad, but that doesn't mean the law is bad. Um, so <laughs> we're human beings. Things will yeah. not be perfect ever. And that's one of the, one of the failures of the left is that they think we are perfectible. Um, we're not, mm. not without God's help and not, not on this earth. This earth will have to pass away before the sin thing is dealt with. You can pass as many laws as you like. People will still do the wrong thing. All right. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, I think here, I, I think I want to read this uh, comment that my buddy Hunter read, uh, said, he said, I've heard ancient ethics would argue that you should kill non-persons, um, in, in parentheses, young children and the lame, if your society has surplus population and personally, they were just speaking their truth. It's actually loving if you think about it, probably. Oh, he's being sarcastic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, the ancient so Greeks, we... the ancient Greeks would, um, after a child was born, if they yeah. weren't interested, it was, it was accepted. I don't think it was, it was really embraced, but it was accepted that you, uh, oftentimes they would just put a child, they called it exposing them. So they just leave them out in the, in the woods to die. And, mm. uh, the, the, um, so it's not, it's not that it's never been done. It has, um, and abortions have been done too, but the history of the West has been very hostile to abortion. Mm. Um, not to save the life of the mother. It's almost always been an exception that if the, the mother and the fetus are in conflict, we choose the mother. Um, in almost all cases, unless the mother decides otherwise, which sometimes happens as well. Um, but it, it's always been the case that 
that we have to make the balance. And yeah. we live in a world in which it may be absolutely wrong to kill, um, but there are times when the alternative is worse, right? So to let yeah. to let something go on that shouldn't be going on and is damaging, you know, huge numbers of people. Sometimes killing is necessary. So I, I, I am not a fan of saying abortion is always wrong. There are times when I think right. it's justified. In fact, I think it's, no, I'll never say it's the right thing to do, but it's the better thing to do sometimes. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I think most Christians would agree that abortion, if it is a thing, it should be rare and it should be in the case of emergencies. It should yeah. be, that's when it should be used. It shouldn't and, be as a birth control method. Right. Yeah. It shouldn't be on demand. Right. It, that's, I think that's something that is, is a reasonable ask. I um, think that's unreasonable. Yeah. And, and for some reason, you know, it has become, um, like a talking point to say that this is reproductive rights. Um, where, I mean, I guess let's, let's get into the philosophy of, of it, if you don't mind, yep. where, at what point do you feel the, um, Christians are correct. Let's, let's try and do both sides. I'll try and maintain this, this, uh, thought process here. At what point do you think on the, on the Christian philosophical view, I guess you could say, um, does the does the fetus become like a human at one point would you say conception like how can we argue for personhood or for humanity um at at, at that level this is one of my huge issues with with Rome, um because it sets an arbitrary time at which we can start considering the the life of the fetus as having some sort of value but it's always it's always value as a means for Roe and Casey and mm. the left. That is, if the mother wants it, um, then it should be allowed to live for the mother. But the mother should be able to decide. Um, okay, so what that means is we get to decide whether or not this human being lives or dies. And mm. that sets an awful precedent, especially when we get to decide that moment. And if you look at the left, it keeps going closer and closer and closer to birth. And now, well, not just now, Peter Singer of, of Princeton um, proposed when I was in graduate school that we should be able to kill children. He's a utilitarian ethicist. He, he proposed that we should be able to kill children up to three or four years old because they're not persons yet. Um, and, and this is a major philosoph philosophical voice given lots and lots of airtime. And his books are all throughout the, the what every university teaches Peter Singer. Every ethics department teaches Peter Singer. It's, it's, this isn't, it's not a marginal case. Um, so if we get to decide when a person is a person or whether a, a human being has enough value to continue living, um, what's to, what's to prevent us from going the route of, of the, uh, communists? And saying, oh yeah, those kulaks, they're not human. It's okay if we kill them. <laughs> um, and the Nazis, those Jews, they're subhuman. It's okay yeah. to exterminate them. This is the logic. And as we said not that long ago, just a few moments ago, um, there is a logic to the positions that we take, whether we like it or not. That logic will tend to play out. And part of the logic of the idea that we can choose when a human being lives means that we can choose when a human being gets to die. And that mm -hmm. in the hands of a government, in the hands of a group of people, I don't want anybody making that decision. So that's the non-Christian starting point. How about okay. as a Christian? Okay, so we look at that and we say, God says human beings are made in the image of God, the imago dei exists in each human being, then we have absolutely no right to take the life of another human being. And if a human being begins, as science tells us, when a sperm and an egg join, that is, what do you have? You have life. And that life has a distinct DNA profile. The life is a mix of the mother and the father. But the mother is a different being from the baby. She has the, a different genetic profile. 
Her blood is not compatible with the baby's blood. It's a different person. Okay. Mm. You may not even want to use the term person at that point. It is a different being. Mm. Um, but in, 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 as I said, in the Christian view, it's a, it's a, it, it carries the image of God. We have no right at any point to decide um, that's an innocent that has done nothing wrong. I mean, it's not violated any laws. It's not murdered someone. Um, if it's done something wrong, then, you know, the law allows us to, to kill it. But it's truly an innocent child. Um, yeah. What right do we have to kill them? And that's, that's the logic that worries me about the materialist and leftist view of humankind. Because mm. there is, everything is so gradual and, um, and diffuse that we have no sharp lines. And for me, a sharp line is, it's a human, it's alive, it's, it has the right to life. Yeah. One talking point that I've heard that, that I appreciate and I like using in, in my conversations about this is, you know, they like to, people who would discredit the personhood or the humanity of, I guess, a zygote, I guess, <laughs> um, they'll say, well, you know, it's just a clump of cells, it's just, et cetera, et cetera. And I like to say, well, well, and I've, I've heard this talking point from, you know, people who are pro-life, they'll say that, that is still a human, <laughs> that is still a human I, clump of cells. Right. It's a human. That is a, right. It's not a giraffe. Right. It's not a sheep. Exactly. Yeah. It's, that is, you know, that is something you did not become a human after you were born. Right. You, you were a zygote at one point. Yep. And, and, uh, another, I don't know if this it contributes to the conversation at all either, but I think this is really interesting when the when the sperm and the egg when there is fertilization um there's actually a a last of light of zinc that you can see visibly on like mm. right under the uh the microscope it's like bing you know <laughs> human human here and it's incredible it's it is a blast of of i think calcium and zinc that you can you can visibly you can see light uh emit from that fertilized egg that that is fascinating yeah. It is incredible. It's, it's, it's a miracle. Right. And in him is there and, and in him there is no darkness at all. Right. So right. that's like the that that's I mean, I, you know, I understand the 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 um the chemistry of it, but just because it's chemistry doesn't mean it's not God. <laughs> so that's <laughs> fascinating. Yeah, that's really neat. <laughs> yeah, you can see if you look it up on YouTube, you can you look up uh light at fertilization or something like that. And you can see it, it goes bam. You can it's a, it's it's a significant amount of light. <laughs> it's, it's really I, impressive. I tend to use the the spark of the divine. I, I've used that in my writings mm. many times, and <laughs> I didn't realize it was an actual spark when I heard that. <laughs> so that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see if I can um, send that send that to you in an email or something like that yeah, after, like after we're that. done here. But it's incredible. Um, I am a Christian with the searching and skeptical mind of an atheist. I don't want to believe anything that isn't true. I know both sides of the looking glass, and I know them with open eyes. I choose Christ's side. I invite you to join me from wherever you stand before the looking glass. That's this week's episode. Thanks for listening, and remember, you can have your religious cake and eat it too. You can have reason, respect for science, a 21st century worldview, and be a Christian.